we made a decision to just come back to St. Helier. Mixed emotions. I really wanted to get going today. Oh. It's a difficult one. It is. <laughs> we want our last sail in this boat to be a nice one, you know? After six years away, we are now, according to our chart, back in UK territorial water. Jersey, found Jersey. We're here. I don't know how to feel about this five days of quarantine. I'm like dreading being stuck on the boat for five days. Except that it was more like six days because day one apparently is as of tomorrow. And then you have to also wait, I think, for your test to come back. So it turns out to be like a week. I've got um, some high quality pottering to do. Thank you, Rodriguez, if you're pottering or who happens to be a Jersey resident. In fact, I bought you some crevettes. <laughs> now we just had someone else, one of our followers, drop off some Percy Picks and some SIM cards. The guy from Customs was literally like, I will bring you food, I will bring you beer. This must be like the friendliest place we've ever been. We can see the outside world even if we can't be a part of it yet. Good morning everyone. Day three of quarantine. So far so good I think. And to be honest we're just kind of getting on with a lot of work. I don't know, it doesn't seem like such a hardship. I have to say that like everyone has been so inc- <laughs> I can't even eat a f***ing yoghurt <laughs> without making mess. Like what is wrong with me? Am I in some sort of embolism? As I'm saying, everyone's been so friendly. Don't you think everyone has been so friendly, Nick? Very friendly. The friendliest. They actually have been the friendliest. What are you up to down here? I'm putting Sitting, the jack. Sitting uh, in the naughty corner. <laughs> He's putting the jack lines back on the boat. Our jack lines, you know, we take them off when we're not using them because UV breaks them down. That's yeah, your life could literally depend on yeah, the integrity life. of that jack, uh, exactly. jack line. Is it jack line? Yeah, jack line. Jack stay, jack line. Jack stay. Should heaven forbid it be holding you to the boat and it rips because you've let it degrade, that's uh, probably your life done. So jack lines, a little bit of tension. Yeah, just for people that are kind of new to sailing. A little bit of tension, I run ours outside of the shroud so you can move on deck. And our new life jackets, if you, if they, they, they tow you backwards. Timo life jackets. I want to check the impeller. Mm. Alright, so spare impeller. It's a screw within a screw and there's actually an impeller puller. You screw this into the, the boss Thanks. where the impeller goes and then if you turn the inner screw, it pulls the impeller out. The other thing is ratchet spanners. Pretty bloody useful for confined spaces. So what we're looking for here in this impeller mm -hmm. is any splits or nicks in these veins. Yeah. So you're not going to change it, you're just checking no, it? Just okay. Once I've got the cap on, you put the screws back in. You can actually get um, quick access water pump covers, which I've always looked at with some sort of envy, but I suppose the problem here is that the, the access is so tight anyway. But that's done. I need to run the engine up 10 minutes. I'm going to run it up for 10 minutes. So once I run it up for 10 minutes, I can check the oil levels as well. So basically, you want to make sure that your whole water strainer is pumping water. No problem there at all. Sure that you're not leaking water. But down here. Make sure there's no water coming out. Yeah, midway between the two dots. Day four of quarantine, I think. Yeah, Nick's waking up with a lot of energy this morning and he's decided today is jobs day. I think that it's the sunshine. It's kind of given him some extra energy. Today he's uh, getting on with all his chores. Uh, one thing we have noticed is that our port side nav light at deck level is, is, is touch and go. It doesn't work all the time. So I'm going to go and check that. It's either a broken filament or it's just a, a poor connection. Oh, so it wasn't a light bulb at all. Oh, that's good. Okay, so something that every, every boat owner should own contact cleaner. Everything that has an electrical connection will at some point get corrosion in, especially if it exposed to the elements. Literally you just spray on and it, it dissolves um, corrosion. 
There we go. So that's there. Now, some of the more astute minded of you will notice that they're filament bulbs. The reason is we, that we very, very rarely use these. We tend to use the tri head mask because we're sailing. The those in the top are LED. However, LED ones are even more sensitive to corrosion. I'm now going to go and check the starboard one and the stern light. Yep, working fine. Yeah, that's working fine. Those are our pre departure checks. Nothing else that needs to be done before departure. We're escaping the marina, but only for the purposes of uh, doing a COVID test. Yeah, so day five test today. We have to get a bus somewhere. We've got instructions. Um, the contact tracer sent us an email with instructions. So we're really hoping that by this time tomorrow, we'll have an email saying that we're negative and we can run free. Either way, it's nice to just get off the boat and go on a little adventure, even if it is just to the airport. <laughs> and to get a swab shoved up our nose. Well, we found the testing center without too uh, much of a problem. Fairly easy, big yellow signs everywhere. And we've been told to wait in this uh, little waiting room. Now we wait. Yeah, she was, a, she was a bit more forceful than the first lady, she wasn't, wasn't she? Forceful. She was a, she, she, yeah, she, she was a bit forceful. after my uh, my mental health and my mental well-being on board it's good for your body it's good to have alone time time by yourself it releases happy happy hormones endorphins so kind of from a chemical point of view it, it makes you feel good and uh, it forces you to get away from the computer take a break reset sometimes I find that like if I'm having a grumpy day or I'm getting frustrated with something you know, with work or whatever, taking a break and doing a workout is the best thing that I can do. I find it very therapeutic. I was never even like that into going to the gym or anything when we lived in London, but I, um, since moving onto the boat, having like half an hour, an hour every day, just to myself, this is my time, this is my alone time. It's, uh, you know, protected, dedicated time that I devote to not just my physical health, but my, my mental health as well. Highly recommend it. Definitely makes me feel good. And having a nice stretch at the end is like a reward for working hard. Day six of quarantine today. Need you to hold this really gently. I need to bend this cable and I need you to offer this cable up to this little slot here. Like that? That's it. Thanks, babe. Perfect. We're hoping, fingers crossed that uh, the email comes in today, not only letting us know the result, but that the result itself is actually negative. What are you wanting to do the first, when we when we get our... Uh, pub. 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 <laughs> you got anything else to say about that? No, pub. How are you feeling after six days of quarantine? Fine. You don't mind it, do you? No, I quite like it. I'm tightening the stanchion bases. Mm. All right. 
Is this the people? No. Nothing in my email yet. So the last time we got an email from the contact tracer. Ten to four. Maybe like it's an automated system where at ten to four every day they send out the results. We should get the result this evening. Oh, hopefully ten to four is the time we get the oh, result. That's all white thing, I feel like a like a kid who's been told that they can't go out and play with their friends even though like they can see them playing outside the window and the sun is shining and the birds are chirping and just, I don't know, such nice weather out there. I just, I'm itching to get out and enjoy it. Nick's sick of my complaining. He's sick of me wandering around looking out the window. Nick's only the contact traces. He really wants to go to the pub. <laughs> Yeah, my name's Nick Fabry and my partner, my wife, is Theresa Vandaloo. Alright, oh, thanks so much. Yeah, I've actually got a massive backlog. I want to dress up in a Freddie Mercury-style pointy bra, hoover around at someone's front room and scream I want to break free over and over again. We just got our results, we're free of COVID and thus we can get off the boat for the first time in a week. I'm excited. They told us on the phone last night, they called to apologize after Nick called them and was like, where's my result? Which I thought was we're like- a very small little rowing boat. Borderline rude, but we were a bit desperate. And they were lovely about it. And it's 11 o'clock and we just got the email through. So, let's go and explore St. Helier. see a little bit of Jersey. It is pretty, pretty nice to be able to get out and get out of quarantine. What are we doing today, Therese? I don't know, actually. One of our patrons is here and he's got his car here. So he's going to take us on a little adventure. So we haven't actually seen any of Jersey apart from St. Hill here. This is St. Albans Bay and uh, it's so pretty. It's beautiful, isn't it, Nick? Yep. Very, very nice. A big drying harbour here. So now you're doing the thing that I do to you, whereas I just like point the camera at you and I'm like... Speak. <laughs> oh yeah. You're on. So the Royal Channel Islands Yacht Club, Simon, our friend, is taking us... Say hello to everyone, Simon. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Simon is a class A gentleman. Um, Almost part pirate, the amount he drinks with me. <laughs> That's very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> he is definitely part pirate. Uh, anyway, so off to the World Channel Islands Yacht Club for a little. Well, apparently it's got a fantastic view, but yacht clubs normally have good ale. So we shall see. Probably getting out gives us a whole new lease of life. But visually, it's amazing. Bittersweet, I suppose. We we love the fact that these are the last weeks with Ruby Rose. And yeah, it's nice that we can show this aspect of, of traveling and, and sailing. So far, we're really enjoying our time here in Jersey. It's been really lovely so far. We haven't had a chance to see much of the island, but I think that 
my kind of overwhelming feeling or takeaway from Jersey so far, despite the fact that we spent a week in isolation, is just how incredibly friendly everyone is. And I think that we've said this quite a few times already and possibly we're starting to sound like a bit of a broken record, but it's true, everyone's so lovely and generous and friendly and just happy to help out. And uh, yeah, we've had such a wonderful, welcoming reception from the residents of Jersey. Getting a really, really nice vibe. So it's um, a very, very, very windy day. Yeah, it's really windy today. Storm Ellen is, is blowing through, so... Link to, to diagram of storm. Storm Ellen right here. <laughs> We've been here a while now. It's been um, pretty nice actually. Getting out of quarantine has been a huge relief. We are now just waiting for a weather window to get ourselves home, back to the UK. And that weather window comes on Monday, so that means that tomorrow we will leave, go and anchor for the night to get ourselves into position to take the tidal stream north. And then Monday morning about 7 a.m. we will leave. So there's a place uh, called near St. John's Village, which is about here, which is directly opposite where we are now. So that in itself will cut time off the journey. We are um, just about to put the, reef the third reefing line in. Hopefully we won't need it. That's it, my love. That's it, all done? Yep. Well, it would seem that, uh, oh, a bit breezy, that we're about to leave St. Helier and uh, go and anchor on this very breezy day. How much is that? 60 pence a litre. That's crazy. Yeah. How'd that happen? How could that have happened? Is it, is it a scratch? It, it happened here, because look, the blue is blue. That's coming off. Right, well, we're back in St. Helier. <laughs> and the sun's come out, and there's bright blue sky behind me now. So, you know, ugh. we made a kind of executive decision to just come back to St. Helier. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that it was just extremely unpleasant getting bashed around. And two is that I think we had enough hesitations over the weather window tomorrow to think, you know what, the fact that we're getting beaten up out there and we're not sure whether tomorrow's gonna be ideal, that was in combination kind of the deciding factors to think, you know what, we're not in a rush. Um, let's come back to St. Helier. We really like Jersey and there's no real need for us to be rushing off into the English Channel when uh, we've got a lot of swell some high winds coming through, a storm coming through after that. Um, and, you know, a pretty unpleasant 15 mile journey around to the other side of the island t today. So, I don't know, a lot of other people would have carried on and a lot of people would have never gone out in that, those conditions to start with. It was kind of like on the edge of what was like acceptable. But I think on balance, we realized that we don't have any real rush to be anywhere and we want our last <laughs> we want our last sail in this boat to be a nice one, you know? There's a point at which, like, things started 
despite the fact that I stowed everything away, um, flying all over the boat, and there were like smashes and crashes. Yeah, look, it's a difficult one, it is. I've been a skipper of my own boats now for coming up 12, 14 years, um, 15 years. And some of the most difficult decisions you ever, ever take as a skipper are to turn the boat around and to not go or to come back. I've got it right about 50% of the time. And so it's difficult, it's psychologically pretty damn challenging to turn a boat around when you've prepared your provisions, you've got yourself psychologically pumped to do it. You've looked at the weather, you've checked the weather. It, it's hard, it's a really, really hard decision to turn around and go, actually, you know what? We're gonna turn around. Now, there are sailing channels like that, that uh, I can't remember what his name is, no bullshit, just sailing. Who goes out and revels in this stuff? And honestly, I'm, you know, no flaws here. But he's a better man than I am. I would not go out uh, and chase force tens. It's just, I, my appetite for risk is less. It is, it is less than him. If you're out and you get caught out, then that's different. But if you have the choice of not getting caught out, it's not. It, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not just trying to, kind of make myself feel good about this. Um, that was a difficult decision. It was very difficult. I am sure that we made the right decision, but it is hard. It is a lot harder than you think. And actually, I, I'm. I think it's a lot braver than, because I'm sure we'll get some blowback. People will be like, "Oh, you're just a pussy. You can't take the. You know, you can't take high seas and high winds." And I can. We've done like you know, 6,000 plus miles across two oceans and I can take it like the best of them, but you don't need to. And I think from that point of view, as Teresa already said, when you don't need to, and we've got time on our side, we're just gonna wait till we got the weather window. Mixed emotions, I really wanted to get going today. So onward to uh, find somewhere for Sunday lunch, I think, as a <laughs> consolation prize. Mm -hmm.